First thing I want to say about this man is when I was brushing up on his bio, I misread his birth county as meh. I guess he is the OG Walter White. Sir John, we need to build pipes. Pipes, Sir John. I don't know, Mr. Connor. What about those cracks? C.Y. O'Connor was an engineer from the very early days of Western Australian history. Starting off as a strapping young Irish lad, helping with the construction of railways, he then moved to the North Island of New Zealand to survey some fresh canterbussy. I think that's a hate crime against the Maori. Over the course of years, he ended up with many appointments and responsibilities over the engineering and surveying of railways and harbours. After the Kiwis reorganisation led him to the not very sexy marine engineer role rather than the department's head, he looked for better job opportunities elsewhere. I reckon the telegram between him and WA's first premier, John Forrest, went a little bit like this. What is my job? Stop. Railways, stop. Harbours, stop. Or roads, stop. Yes, stop. O'Connor's first mission, if he chose to accept it, was a demand by Forrest to build the Fremantle Harbour. That's right, he invented Femboy Town's most iconic port. The initial plans elaborated by Australian Anakin Skywalker was for an outer harbour due to the believed menace of literal sand travel. Forrest didn't want to fork out the cost for that project, and O'Connor, ever the Vader hater, decided to look into the matter himself both by analysing existing data and creating his own through soundings and consultation, he concluded that sand won't get everywhere, even though it is rough and coarse. This led to him adjusting the designs into a much more affordable version, which, like me and the discount section of IGA, attracted Forrest's eyes. Parliament was convinced by O'Connor's clear presentation of the £800,000 eight-year-long proposal, which I imagine looked like either a TEDx talk or a Bethesda game reveal. And Given the project was in its early stages, I would assume the latter. Yeah, it, it just works. Official construction began in 1892 and finished in 1897. The mountainous effort success was officially sealed on the 12th of September 1900 when the RMS Himalaya entered and berthed at Fremantle, harbouring mail. O'Connor also oversaw every little boy in Australia's dream of increased rail networks across the country. By every little boy, I mean me. Yes, affordable transport. Building rail from Northern to Southern Cross, the Southwest, Walkaway and Mullawa, and Coolgardie to Kalgoorlie, among others. His levels of responsibility also meant the man wielded power over transport policy and used it to push for reroutes, plans, and upgrades to existing systems, albeit with some resistance. During his time as a trainman, he pushed for vast improvements to working conditions for his workers. His final report as general manager noting that the workers under his command were overworked, underpaid, and endured atrocious working conditions. Of course, O'Connor is known for something else. Else. having a fat pipe that led to his death. We've all had a mate that's been there. <laughs> in an attempt to save Kalgoorlie from a water crisis, I assume caused because ketamine is diuretic or something, old mate O'Connor proposed building a 530 kilometer long pipe from Darling Range to Coolgardie near Kalgoorlie. He got engineering Laszlo's, the greatest minds of their generation, from London to approve the project's viability. But local media was still vehemently critical of the project. It took two full years before Forrest was able to convince the parliament of the plan's viability and delays regarding the pipe delivery plagued the initial project. After Forrest left state politics to enter the newly made federal government, the project went at risk as an unstable state government proceeded. At this point, the media got real vicious, as it tends to do to people who don't do things they like. The Sunday Times outlaid vicious and defamatory attacks to such a degree that it drove C.Y. O'Connor to suicide. Completely unfounded too. In reference to O'Connor's pie project, in spite of him presenting facts on how it works, in spite of it being verified as practical by some of the world's top engineers, and in spite of it working a few years later, they wrote, This shy engineer from New Zealand has absolutely flourished in the palm of Greece. This man has exhibited such gross blundering, or something worse, his management of great public works, that it is by no means exaggeration that he has robbed the taxpayer of his state out of millions. Going to fix a small leak 
in the pipe at Chidlow's Well. He rode along Fremantle Beach past the New Harbour and down to Rob Jetty. It was at Rob Jetty on the 10th of March 1902 where he rode his horse into the sea, never to return, shooting himself in the head with a revolver as he sank into the ocean. This was the note he left in his wake. The Kulgarni scheme is all right, and I would finish it if I got the chance and protection from misrepresentation. But there is no hope of that now, and it is better that it should be given to some entirely new man to do, who will be untrammeled by prior responsibility. This bronze statue built in his honor was created by Pietro Porcilli, and is served well, placed next to the harbor O'Connor designed. <laughs>